Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday mountain weather update. I want to go up to the northeast, up to Jay Peak, northern Vermont. I mean, what a day. 8 to 12 inches of new snow in the last 24 hours. Um, and that's 28 inches in the last uh, seven days. Puts them at a season total approaching 200 inches at 187. I mean, they're competing and beating a number of western ski resorts up there at Jay Peak. Uh, here's a live camera up there from... Uh, J Peak right now. So again, 8 to 12 in the last 24 hours. No doubt it's going to be a good day. All right, here's radar out of the northeast. So we've kind of got a combination of things going on. We've got lake effect coming off Erie and Ontario. There's also some snow just kind of rotating up here over northern Vermont, uh, parts of central, even central Vermont, parts of Maine. And then there's another little storm system. You can see it moving through Chicago and Indiana. So that's going to keep the snow going today with additional light snow accumulation, light to moderate in some places across the northeast. All right, across the west, it's high and dry. It's it's a waiting game now for our Arctic front, which is going to drop straight out of B.C. and Alberta, and then all the way down through Montana, Wyoming, and into Colorado. And that's going to happen 117, 118, and 119. So that's yet to come. Let me set the table with the water vapor. So this is low level, and you're looking at Oranges and reds, that's going to be your drier air aloft. The whites and the blues will be your moisture. A couple of things to mention. Big storm here helping to kind of move the pattern around. And then the one, the low behind it, that's the one that's going to come in. Basically drop straight down, grab that Arctic air, and then uh, just basically race down through Montana, Wyoming, and into Colorado, where we'll see snow and an Arctic blast along with snow for northern New Mexico as well. And you'll notice there's a little bit of spin right here with a, an area of low pressure. That's been um, generating a lot of wind across southern California, the Los Angeles area, the surrounding uh, surrounding hills as well. It's been a real problem. So the thinking is that while this low comes to the south, it's possible that this low will also eject at the same time. The two might actually merge uh, and then move out into the plains. So we'll have to watch that as a possibility down the road. Not sure, though, exact timing if that merger is going to happen. All right, here are my bullet points. So just a few. We've got our next storm system, 117, 18, 19, with the Arctic blast. Again, air temperatures of minus 15 to minus 25, maybe even minus 30 in some locations. And in the northeast in California, I don't have any major storm systems. It's just kind of a continuation of some lake effect in a, in a couple of spots and, and some residual snow rotating through. Here's my snow timeline for Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, Interior, BC, and the northeast. So up in Big Sky, you've got some uh, moderate accumulations coming on 117 with that Arctic front and then light 118.19. And while I mentioned Big Sky, look at the cam out of Big Sky, the Lone Peak tram cam, uh, the tram to the uh, the moon this morning. Look at that uh, basically full moon lighting up everything. What a view up there this morning. Okay, now in the Wasatch, that Arctic front is late 117 into 118 with light Snow accumulation still looks more like a glancing blow. The Tetons light on 117. I wish I had more for the Tetons, but I don't. 119, uh, just light accumulations. Now, Colorado afternoon, evening, 117 and 118 looks to be moderate and moderate to heavy um, with accumulation because the front's going to come in, kind of get hung up. There's going to be some more graphics that come into a play. Um, so you'll have storm snow and also, um, also more graphics known than light trickling into 119. Tahoe nothing, interior BC, potentially moderate accumulations through Revelstoke and maybe Kicking Horse. Everybody else is going to be pretty light though. And you can see in the northeast there are a few chances for some light snow. Now looking at this Arctic blast, here's today uh, the update, this morning's update as far as high and low temperatures go for Denver. You can see we're mild here for the rest of the week, 30s, 40s, 50s, but then there comes the blast on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Um, single digits, Sunday, Monday, and well below zero at night, potentially 10 to 15 below zero. Um, they're late Sunday into Monday morning. Here's the update for the high mountains. Now, this is Breckenridge at about 9,600 feet. You can see the blast coming in Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And look at those overnight lows. I mean, 30 to 35 degrees below zero. That is going to be very cold. And I was estimating yesterday, you know, looking at temperatures, air temps at like 14,000 feet in Colorado, that it was easily going to be 30 below. 
And now I'm definitely convinced of that. Maybe even 35, 40 below. I mean, that would be unbelievably cold at those high elevations. And so when this comes through, we are going to have snow accumulation um, with very high efficiency. But in some cases, it might actually be too cold to get decent accumulation. The, the flakes are going to be tiny like pixie dust. So that's something to keep in mind. And here's the time height forecast for Cameron Pass up in the northern mountains of Colorado. There's just a tiny bit of green, and that's what I'm seeing. I'm looking for here is the green. That's a higher humidity, a better chance of snow um, over the next 72 hours. You read that from right to left on that chart, and it's through all the vertical layers of the atmosphere. And you can see there's just a little bit of green hanging around today. Maybe a, a dusting of snow over the northern mountains of Colorado. And then it's dry, and then the moisture would increase again on 18 and 19 with that Arctic front. All right, let's track the snow. Here's snow accumulation um, through the course of time. So we'll start it at lunchtime today, and you can see that tiny little batch of snow coming out of Wyoming, and then just a tiny little itty bitty blue painting the, the northern mountains of Colorado. Anything in that blue color is light snow that's under three inches. Now, when you start popping into the greens, um, that's three, four, five, six, over six, the yellows, and so on. So let me just push this ahead. Here's this afternoon, there's late tonight. There's that snow moving through the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes up into the northeast with light to maybe moderate accumulations, potentially moderate. Certainly, that's going to be the case along the lake with the lake effect, the LES, and then up into northern Vermont, light to moderate. That's definitely a possibility. Okay, here we are early tomorrow morning, Wednesday the 15th. Snow, light, light to moderate snow continues in the northeast, then it starts to fade. Here we are by late Wednesday. Another clipper coming into the Great Lakes. You can see the light snow accumulations. That's early Thursday, January 16th. Um, here we are by lunch on Thursday. There's late Thursday. Now look to the north. Here comes our Arctic front with some snow accumulation for BC. Um, looks to be on the lighter side, except for probably Revelstoke. Um, some snow for the coastal range, very high up. All right, here we go uh, early on Friday, January 17th. Snow dropping down into Montana, potentially brushing central to northern, more so central Idaho. And then it drops down into Wyoming. Here's lunchtime on Friday. Here's late on Friday. Okay, so at this point, you've got some light to moderate snows kind of brushing the Tetons, the... Um, the Wind Rivers, and then eventually it's going to drop down into the Wasatch, the High Uintas, and the central and northern mountains of Colorado. And you'll notice it's already doing so here late Friday down the front range of Colorado. So this is also going to be an event for Fort Collins and Boulder and Denver, Greeley, all the front range cities, much, much colder with an Arctic blast. And yes, we're going to have snow accumulation. Um, okay, here we are early Saturday morning. Look at some of the green popping up there in the central and northern mountains of Colorado up to the foothills of Colorado, maybe even down close to the uh, the western suburbs of Denver. That's over three, four inches. Um, okay, here we go at, um, here's lunch into the afternoon on Saturday. Snow now moving south into southern Colorado, down through the springs in Pueblo, headed into northern New Mexico. Here we are by late Saturday. Okay, here's early Sunday. Um, now that storm is basically fading. Yesterday, it looked like there might be a little rider, a little coattail storm. Today, there's not much of that left, um, so it's mainly the one storm. Okay, here we are on, um, this is afternoon of Sunday the 19th. Now, this particular model, by the time we get into late Sunday and early Monday, that cutoff low that I showed you that's out over the, um, the South Pacific, this actually brings that in with very odd timing. It's a later timing, so it doesn't merge with that initial storm. And this actually brings it through the four corners um, late Sunday into Monday. I am definitely not sold on this, on this idea, but it's a possibility. Okay, here we go with my forecast. So this is all of today through the 19th. So we'll start in the Wasatch, brought those numbers down another inch, two to four inches. It really just looks like a glancing blow. Up in the... Um, up in the Tetons, three or four inches, more of just a, a glancing blow as it just as the front really races through that area. There's not a lot of time. Now, there's going to be more time in Colorado, and so those numbers have stayed pretty consistent, gone up a little bit from yesterday, um, about eight, nine, ten inches from Aspen Snowmass to Vail to Copper down into Summit County up to Loveland, A Basin, Keystone, Winter Park, um, 
in Eldora. Potentially a foot up there on Cameron Pass, Steamboat, Buffalo Pass, maybe even a little bit more. Um, looking down at the Crested Butte 6, maybe 8 over Monarch. Potentially 6 down there at Silverton. Um, and over Wolf Creek in. I brought the numbers up a little bit here for Kuchara and Taos. Certainly 8, maybe even 9, 10 inches. Not out of the question for those areas. And I got nothing for California. I got nothing for Oregon. And basically, very little to nothing for the Pacific Northwest. Now, Interior BC, most of the accumulations up there are around Kicking Horse, Rebel Stoke, and Marmon Basin. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 inches of accumulation. Okay, up in the Northeast... Now, on top of what Jay Peak has already got, they could still pick up another 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 inches over, you know, through the period of today through the 19th. Not out of the question. And then quite a bit less as you move into southern Vermont, southern New Hampshire, uh, Massachusetts, southern New York. Very light snow accumulation there. Still looking at some uh, lake effect through Snow Ridge and some blow off up into Whiteface. Okay, guys, we're going to end on the big western map again all of today through the 19th, and there are definitely some places to ski once we get into this weekend with that Arctic front. But, man, is it going to be cold um, through the Tetons, the Wasatch, and especially in the Colorado. That's where some of the biggest numbers are going to be and some of the coldest temperatures. Guys, take care. I appreciate you tuning in here. Have a great day.